morning, and thank you for coming. My name is Ted Smith. I'm the founder of the Victoria Cannabis Buyers Club and the publisher of the Cannabis Digest newspaper. We have asked you to come here today to discuss our protest against the new federal regulations for medical marijuana, the Marijuana for Medical Purposes regulations, which come into effect today, which do not allow patients to grow their own medicine. And so today we have brought a number of individuals to discuss why this is a problem. And first is John Conroy, the lawyer who was uh, lead counsel in the injunction, which successfully has um, suspended this change in regulations. Thank you for coming. Thank you. The uh, nature of the overall challenge is, of course, to establish what were, or to reaffirm what was established by the Ontario Court of Appeal uh, over 10 years ago, and that is that uh, the courts determined as a result of the Constitution of Canada that the government had to create a viable constitutional exemption to the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act for medically approved patients. So if you're medically approved, if there's no exemption, you're forced to choose between your liberty on the one hand because of the penalties and so on in the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act and your health on the other by being unable to use your medicine that's approved by your doctor. So that's the overall framework. So remember that when the court found that this violated people's constitutional rights, the lack of exemption, they suspended the declaration of unconstitutionality and gave the government a year to try and come up with a solution to make things constitutional. The medical marijuana access regulations, which expire or which were going to expire, and I suppose expire to some extent, uh, March 31st, um, were those were the exemption that the government put forward. There were a number of court cases challenging the restrictions in those regulations. There were successful challenges. The government responded minimally. And now here we are some roughly 13 years later, and the government has decided to replace that exemption with this proposed new exemption under the Marijuana for Medical Purposes regulations, which takes away the right of the person to produce for themselves and to control the quality and so on of their medicine. Rights which were established in the Parker case here in 2001 and reaffirmed by the Ontario Court of Appeal in Myrna just last year. So we have in place an injunction that protects all those who had valid authorizations to possess as of the date of the decision, March 21st, currently, and had valid personal production or designated grower permits as of September 30th last year. So no new applications, no ability to change what's in the documents at this point, but grandfathered between now and the trial. Uh, there was some question whether the government was going to accept that it applied to all medically approved patients. Uh, the fact that they've now announced an appeal or that they plan to appeal the injunction decision uh, would indicate that they do now accept that it applies to all. So the Federal Court of Appeal will be called upon at some point to determine whether or not Mr. Justice Manson was correct or not in granting the injunction. And to do that, they'll have to look at one, whether it's a serious question to be tried, two, whether irreparable harm will be suffered by the patients if no injunction is granted between now and the trial, and where the balance of convenience lies between the government and the patients. And of course, we will submit that the injunction should be upheld and we should proceed to trial as expeditiously as possible. Thank you. I'd like to introduce uh, Alison Murden, who is one of the patients affected by the regulations. And Alison, could you come forward, please? Yeah, that. No, actually, Norm, I desperately want to get up today. It's very important. Oh, I apologize. Can I have that in? Allison is also the representative of the Coalition Against Repeal for Eastern Canada, which is the group of patients that came together in order to help uh, put this lawsuit uh, together. Excuse me. Thank you very much, John, and thank you, everybody. 
I actually, again, have been doing so many interviews these last few weeks that I'm very tired, so I apologize for the chair. But I'm telling you that the reason I am on my feet today is because of things like medical cannabis. An open letter to Prime Minister Harper and to all Canadian members of Parliament. My name is Alison Merton. I have been asked to speak to you today on behalf of the approximately 40,000 medical cannabis patients across Canada who are licensed, who choose to grow their own medicine and or have someone we love grow and tend it for us. All of the patients here today and across this country should be applauded for standing up and fighting alongside of us to maintain our constitutional right to take care of ourselves and those we love. These rights have not been easily attainable for many. This has to change. I suffer from chronic progressive multiple sclerosis and the worst pain known to medicine in my face and head. I've had that for the last 26 years. It's associated with multiple sclerosis and it's called Tick Dollaroo. I am out of my electric wheelchair and walking today because of natural therapies such as cannabis. My great-grandfather, Peter McPherson, also suffered from this excruciating pain. Doctors treated him with hot liquid gold injections in his face. I fear someone else in my family will also one day be afflicted. We need your help. On Friday, March 21st, 2014, Cannabis patients across Canada won an injunction to halt the newly proposed Marijuana for Medical Purpose regulations in its tracks. Patients in Canada will continue to grow our own cannabis as long as our health and the Constitution dictate. Although, as a retired corrections officer, I deeply fear arrest. I don't think any of us understand. Why do we have to keep fighting for a God-given right? Our government should take care of Canadians who need medical marijuana, as long as our health and the Constitution dictate. Although, as a retired corrections officer, I deeply fear arrest. I don't think any of us understand. Why do we have to keep fighting for a God-given right? Our government should take care of Canadians who need medical marijuana, not make us go to the courts. Thank you. I'd like to introduce my friend, Debbie Stoltz Giffen, who also suffers from multiple sclerosis, who's come all the way from the East Coast here in Canada. Thank you. She is the uh, Director of Medical Mar 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 Maritiners Pardon me, Maritimers Unite for Medical Marijuana, or MUM, as it's also known. Thank you, Debbie Stoltz Giffen. Thank you, Allison. Um, I've be also been a patient in, enrolled in this program to grow our own cannabis as long as our health and the Constitution dictate. Although, as a retired corrections officer, I deeply fear arrest. I don't think any of us understand. Why do we have to keep fighting for a God-given right? Our government should take care of Canadians who need medical marijuana, not make us go to the courts. Thank you. I'd like to introduce my friend, Debbie Stoltz Giffen, who also suffers from multiple sclerosis, who's come all the way from the East Coast here in Canada. Thank you. She is the uh, Director of Medical Mar Mar Maritimers, pardon me, Maritimers Unite for Medical Marijuana, or MUM, as it's also known. Thank you, Debbie Stoltz Giffen. Thank you, Allison. Um, I've be also been a patient in, enrolled in this program since its inception, and in fact, prior to that, I held a Section 56 exemption. Um, 
and have experienced many frustrations along the way at the hands of our federal government. Fortunately, you could almost hear, though, the sounds of thousands of cannabis seeds sprouting the weekend after Justin Manson ordered Health Canada to cease and desist with the full implementation of the MMPR when he provided legal protection to those patients who'd been enrolled in the medical marijuana access regulations as of September 30th, 2013. Justice Manson wisely grandfathered in patients while they awaited a trial to examine the constitutionality of the MMPR. Interestingly, Health Canada is eager to preserve the vested economic interest of the major cannabis corporations, as opposed to offering some of the country's sickest citizens protection under our Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Like Allison, um, cannabis is a main part of my medical regime. In fact, it's the only medicine that I can consume. I developed severe allergic reactions to the MS medications and uh, anything of a pharmaceutical nature that I tried was, was a disaster for my health. So in my mind, what Health Canada have done is, is forced patients to worry about our basic health maintenance versus our liberty, and it's, it's simply unconscionable. Perhaps Health, Health Canada should be renamed Wealth Canada instead. The heartless approach of the federal conservative government would have seen patients destroying all excess medication in cannabis plants, mixing the debris with kitty litter and depositing it curbside today. Furthermore, we had to notify Health Canada of how much we destroyed, or they would notify the local constabulary and they would kick our doors in, turn our homes upside down, humiliate us in our communities, perhaps rip our families apart if we had young children living in our homes, and basically turn our, up, our lives upside down. All in the interest of public safety, they say. What utter balderdash. They should be ashamed. The fact that the catalyst for this program was a court order is evident from day one. Health Canada's lengthy track record for patient abuse and incompetency is abysmal. In this recent, in the, the MMPR, um, one of the things they were trying to do as well was deny patients the use of extracts, which could be anything as simple as a cup of cannabis tea, a brownie, a cannabis chocolate, a little bit of tincture, all in the name of preserving our health. Health Canada also really don't like us smoking it. They say that's not really in our best interest either, but yet they turn around and deny us the use of something simple, like I said, like a brownie or a cup of tea to ease our suffering or as Allison just pointed out, or vaporizing as well. Patients are your friends, neighbors, and family members. We are not the criminals this government would have you believe. We are not a threat to public safety. We are not a danger to our neighborhoods. And the bottom line is, when they lie, this being the federal government, we suffer. And, and we being the patients, the critically, chronically ill of this country. Um, in fact, some of the illest people in this country um, being left to fight the federal government is absolutely abhorrent. They should be ashamed. Um, are there more questions <clears throat> from the gallery here? If, if the injunction remains, um, yes. What are we looking at? Are we looking at uh, months? Are we looking at perhaps a year before that we have some certainty? Or? The estimate was nine to 12 months that uh, Justice Manson uh, indicated. And certainly, I think it's in everybody's interest for us to proceed as expeditiously as possible. Uh, I haven't had a chance to speak with the government lawyers yet about a schedule, but that will be one of the next things we do. This, uh, <clears throat> I haven't received any notice of appeal yet, so I don't know what the grounds of appeal are. And that may delay things a little bit because we'll have to focus on that. But otherwise, our hope was to 
proceed, get the Section 7 charter right issue defined, deal with the dried marijuana limit issue and the 150 gram maximum issue, and then bear in mind that the onus shifts to the government to establish any limits under Section 1 of the charter. And that's where the evidence presumably to do with, or the lack of evidence in my submission about fire and mold and public safety will, will arise, and they will have to bear the burden of establishing that that warrants a limitation on the constitutional rights of the patients. Could I get you to just to, to characterize the, the government's um, approach, the, their language? Uh, how would you characterize how they're, how they're tackling this issue, Mr. Conroy? Well, um, the evidence when examining some of their witnesses in relation to this issue, uh, the position of the government seemed to be that the patients should wait and see how the market develops. Um, the expert uh, economists in terms of supply, as I understand it, are based on their uh, the literature, which is on the application form uh, under the MMAR about uh, people normally using one to three grams a day. But that flies in the face of the actual uh, information where uh, Health Canada apparently approved something like 188 kilograms, 188,000 kilograms last year, um, and that certainly isn't the supply that's there today for the patients. They say, well, that's what was authorized to be used, but again, it was a patient doctor looking at their situation, determining what the appropriate grams or dosage per day was, and then Health Canada had to approve that. It wasn't... Uh, 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 that Health Canada could veto that. They certainly sometimes raised questions about the grams per day, but that was really a, a decision between the doctor and the patient. The system that the federal government has put together, is it, is, is it essentially the concern that, that you're actually going to run out of supply, or is the greater concern the, the increased cost to patients? The concern for the patients is the cost. The patients indicate that they have been able to uh, produce for 50 cents to three grams, uh, $3 per gram. If you go back to Parker, Mr. Parker grew his own plants out of economic hardship. He couldn't afford the black market prices. We say the same situation prevails now. We have patients who cannot afford black market prices, gray market prices, or the licensed producer prices as estimated and shown on their web pages and other material. So lots of patients learned to grow for themselves, took courses, made a production site, whether in their basement or in an outbuilding or, or whatever, learned how to do it, uh, put their plants outdoors, some of them from time to time to save on the electricity costs. That won't be permitted under the marijuana for medical purposes regulations. Uh, in British Columbia, as a result of the Smith case, they were allowed to use extracts. That case is still on appeal. Uh, my opinion is that Patients who are grandfathered, at least those in British Columbia, will be able to continue to do so pending any appeal or changes in the court proceedings. But economics is a big factor, was a big factor in Parker, and is a big factor in this case. Bella, what is the cost now that, that when patients are making or producing their own product as opposed to what the government cost is going to be per patient? The estimated prices from the licensed producers is generally 5 to $12 and up. There are some that are coming up with a special program that can go down as low as $3 a gram. The patients tell me, and the evidence supports, that they can produce between $0.50 cents and $3 a gram. And uh, Dr. Grutendorf, the economist for the government, agreed that these people were not really part of the licensed producers' target market because they won't be able to produce that cheaply. So. It would cost me sixty. It would cost me sixty thousand dollars to purchase cannabis through one of the licensed producers. Sixty thousand dollars a year, uh, and I live on under thirty thousand dollars a year. Um, I currently own my own home. But if I were forced into the corner in that situation, it would be a question of how long I would be able to own my own home. Um, it would certainly force me into further impoverished situations to comply with the government or else put me in a position where I couldn't comply with the government at all and 
be forced to break the law to maintain the only source of medicine that, that is effective to treat my multiple sclerosis on a daily basis. Uh, I'm just wondering uh, what your thoughts are on the notion that if, if the government is regulating this to the point where they require you to buy it from the government or some other source that's regulated by the government, uh, that the, the product should be covered under OHIP in Ontario, for example, or, or provincial health drug plans? Well, cert certainly if, if Health Canada are going to back patients into that fine of a corner, there should be some form of provincial health care coverage. But currently, cannabis doesn't have a, a DIN number, a drug identification number, which makes it easier for the provinces to turn away from providing coverage for it. And right now there is no attempt to get a DIN number for cannabis in this country, so it would be virtually impossible for it to be covered without that. Although it's covered, Veterans Affairs has said that they will cover veterans, um, but I think they're the only uh, ones that have, have come forward to say that they will do that. Uh, none of the provincial, uh, and it's a provincial health care issue as I understand it, whether or not uh, things are covered under any of these plans. I think I should say that even uh, in relation to other medicines, there's a major problem of lots of patients who uh, are prescribed all kinds of drugs who, who can't afford it, even on top, the costs even on top of the health care plans. And so that uh, would probably still be an issue in terms of cannabis as well. Uh, the medicines, those medicines, of course, are medicines that people can't manufacture or, or produce for themselves, whereas cannabis is. Uh, and uh, can be grown by patients, for patients, effectively, as 13 years have demonstrated. Well, excuse me, I just wanted to add something. Again, I've been battling chronic progressive multiple sclerosis and tick dollar for over 20 years, and I have found cannabis, cannabis pardon me, to be one of the best medicines I have ever, ever taken into my body. I use a lot of natural therapies. I've worked with doctors and scientists all around the world for the last 26 years to find out exactly how cannabis can help someone in my position and found not only can it help things like multiple sclerosis, but again, there are studies being done at some place called the International Association for Cannabinoid Medicines, which I mentioned on Canada AM this morning because a number of the doctors that I deal with, again, are on the board there. And what they do is they study this as medicine and they put it out so that everybody all around the world who's interested can read these studies and learn everything they need to know about cannabis as medicine. Thank you again. It should be remembered that cannabis was on the U.S. Pharmacopeia up until 1942 and it is back on the American Herbal Pharmacopeia as of last year. Uh, there's a tendency amongst the medical uh, professions, licensing bodies and others to say that we know very little about marijuana simply because there haven't been any double-blind placebo-based studies. One of the reasons, of course, that there haven't been that many of those types of studies is because the National Institute of Drug Abuse in the U.S. refuses to provide researchers with cannabis in order to do the studies in the first place. But believe me, cannabis has been studied probably more than any other drug. And if you take the time and effort to go and look up how many people have been uh, processed through studies uh, or studies that have been done, such as Donald Tashkin, in relation to impact of 30 years uh, in terms of longitudinal studies. So there's, there's lots of information out there about the medical benefits of, of cannabis. Um, it's just that the medical profession, uh, even though uh, this particular drug uh, has no lethal dose, um, is uh, saying that it has to have... Uh, or be in the blue book or, or be something that's passed these tests before they feel that they won't cause harm. In my submission, their failure to look and investigate this is allowing people to suffer harm because of their unwillingness to look into this and, and uh, really look into the situation for the benefit of the patients. Very good. Yeah. Any more questions then? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming. Thank uh, you. you guys want to do some uh, um, on one, on one, on one?
Okay, and we are having a rally at noon on the front lawn. Uh, if anyone would be, from all across Canada, yeah, so. there's a lot more people here that would like to protest this. We are so. not taking Thank this you very much for coming. Down. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, sorry. Holy shit.